Hi guys, welcome back to yet another Somebody's Someone Saturday and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for watching. Very glad to see that this video came up on your feed somehow. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you again so much for subscribing and tuning in. But if you are new, don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe and I think there's a little bell that you're supposed to be able to turn on. Now I am in a different room and if you can see the bed back here, I'm not sure if you can or not, but it's not made. I'm washing the sheets, so don't come for me for having an unmade bed. I am trying to to do some organizing and cleaning, um, but I'm in a different room. And can we just talk about how much better the lighting is down here? <laughs> I can't believe it. I think I might have to like start doing them down here because this is good. There's no like weird reflection like from my camera or anything. And oh, by the way, if you ever see me squint, I have an eye condition and I can't <laughs> see sometimes very well. Um, yeah, so I have to have eye surgery, but that's like way in the hopefully not so distant future. But anyway, there's a lot that goes into it, um, but I can't, yeah, I have, a, I have a weird eye condition. Um, so if you ever see me squint, nah, I can't see it. It's just kind of like me trying to actually like <laughs> see what's going on because I can't see myself very well. <laughs> a little blurry. Um, but anyway, this story is going to be about Kristen Medaffery. And I think that's how you say your last name. I try so hard to make sure that I am pronouncing the names correctly, um, just out of respect. But sometimes it's hard because I've heard different names be pronounced different ways. And I just want to make that clear. You know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful um, or anything like that. But anyway, today's story is about Kristen Deborah Medaffery. And I just um, want to point out that there are some allegations in this video um, and we're just going to kind of have to go with that and go off of that. Anyway, cue the intro. Let's get into it. Warning. The following content may be considered disturbing or unsettling to certain viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is meant for informative purposes only. Hundreds of thousands of people are reported missing every year. This is just one of them. Kristen Deborah Medaffery was born on June 1st, 1979 in Danbury, Connecticut. Her mom's name was Deborah and she was a teacher and her dad's name was Bob and he was an electrical engineer. She was raised in Charlotte, North Carolina and at the making of this video she would be 42 years old. In 1997, Kristen had completed her freshman year at North Carolina State University. Kristen had actually received something called a Park Scholarship, and a Park Scholarship is actually something um, that is awarded to an undergraduate, and it is part of their undergraduate program. And the goal, according to what I read online, is to bring exceptional students to North Carolina State University based on outstanding accomplishments and potential in scholarship leadership, service, and character. And only 40 of these, about 40 of these scholarships are awarded each year. And Kristen was on the receiving end of one of those scholarships. Kristen actually decided to travel alone to San Francisco to the Bay Area for the summer with the plans of studying photography at the University of California Berkeley campus. Kristen used Craigslist, and I didn't even know Craigslist was around back then, but anyway, she used Craigslist to find a room in a house, and it was located on Jane Avenue in the Oakland area. In the house, she had four male roommates. While there, Kristen found a part-time job at San Francisco's Museum of Modern Art, and she actually had a full-time job at a coffee shop called Spinelli's Coffee Shop and that was her full-time job. So she had a part-time job, a full-time job, and was going to be studying over the summer. Very, very ambitious. At the making of this video, Kristen has been missing for 24 years. Three weeks after her 18th birthday on June 23rd, 1997, Kristen finished her shift at Spinelli's coffee shop around 3 p.m. According to co-workers, she mentioned wanting to visit Baker Beach the same afternoon to go to a party. 45 minutes after her shift ended,
Kristen's co-workers from the coffee shop saw her with a blonde woman and they were on the second floor of the Galleria where uh, the coffee shop was located. In the 24 years that Kristen has been missing, the blonde woman has never been identified nor has she come forward. There is video footage of Kristen taking money out of her bank, out of the ATM or out of the um, teller that you actually have to speak with somebody with, I'm not sure which one, but there is video of Kristen with the blonde woman getting money out of her bank. June 24th was the first day at UC Berkeley. Kristen never showed, but she'd actually paid the $925 in tuition fees already to be able to attend the class. So Kristen definitely intended on going to this class. She totally intended on taking this class. She also had a $400 check at Spanelli's coffee shop that went unpicked up. She never, it went, um, she never picked it up. So $400 was just sitting there at the coffee shop. A few days later, Kristen's dead Bob had actually called and left a voicemail on the home phone landline. One of her roommates called Bob back and said that Kristen actually never came home. None of the roommates had seen her since the night of June 23rd. They didn't bother to report her missing either. So maybe they just saw Kristen was just out having fun making friends with people. On June 27th, Deborah and Bob Medaffery flew to the San Francisco Bay Area and reported Kristen missing to the Oakland Police Department. However, they did not start investigating Kristen's disappearance until Monday, June 30th. So they waited a few days after Kristen was reported missing to bother starting their investigation. I'm not sure why, but they did. Eventually, bloodhounds picked up Kristen's scent and it led him to the mini 38 Gary bus that was from a bus stop outside the Galleria. And it led them also to an area near the end of the bus route at Sutro Heights Park. Unfortunately, that's where it ended. It ended near the beach. Bob and Deborah found a newspaper called the Bay Guardian, actually, that was stuffed in a trash bin. And in the newspaper, there was an ad in the personals column and it had been circled. Law enforcement officers weren't able to find out who placed the ad, and there's nothing to indicate that Kristen had in fact responded to the ad. However, the ad did read, friends, female seeking friends to share activities who enjoy music, photography, working out, walks, coffee, or simply the beach, exploring the Bay Area. Call me. Fast forward to a few weeks later on July 10th, 1997. A man by the name of John Onoma called a station named KGOTV and told them that Kristen was murdered and that her body had actually been gotten disposed of under a wooden bridge near Point Reyes. John lived near the Galleria and further investigation into him actually revealed allegations that John had actually lied to the police because he thought that two women that worked with his girlfriend were trying to get her fired. They were having a lot of drama in the workplace, and he thought that these two women were purposely seeking out his girlfriend to get her fired from her job. So in return, John called this station and made up this lie that these two women actually had something to do with it, um, that they disposed of Kristen, that they hurt her. Um, they were trying to, he really, really thought that they were trying to get his girlfriend fired from her job at the YMCA. John also denied ever meeting Kristen. Nonetheless, John's apartment was searched and they found quite a bit of blood. However, through DNA testing, it was revealed that it was not human blood, but that of a cat. Law enforcement officers also discovered that John had placed a personal ad for women in the area and actually coerced them into some type of S type of behavior. They found this out because the women, he had apparently been harassed by him because of work-related problems. And they didn't know, like I said, at first they didn't know that it was him um, that called in and said all these things, but then they found out that it was him. There was a woman who made the call and he admitted to another female that 
he said he knew for John had allegedly abused her. So there was a woman that came forward and said that John allegedly abused her. He also allegedly threatened to kill her during the attack. And he also allegedly said, now you know what happened to Kristen Medaffery. Three other women also came forward eventually and said that they had been hurt by John in a certain way, but that they were basically lured to him by his girlfriend. So his girlfriend that he was worried was going to be getting fired from his job actually helped him coerce these women into coming back to his apartment or wherever they, they did these acts to these women. Um, his girlfriend helped him. So anyway, the cops searched John's apartment and found his girlfriend's journal and it was missing pages from the time that Kristen went missing. Since they don't have any actual evidence linking John to Kristen's disappearance, they were never able to charge John and he has actually since moved back to his native Hawaii where he is originally from. Robert Durst was actually looked into as well as a possible suspect. His first wife, Kathleen, disappeared in 1982, and that was in New York. Robert Durst was actually charged with the murder in 2001 that occurred in Texas. Morris Black was killed, and Robert Durst said he did it in self-defense. For this murder, he was acquitted in 2003. In 2015, he was actually charged again with a murder in the 2000 shooting death of Susan Berman. And remember, there was a show a few years ago around this time, I think it was in 2015, um, called The Jinx, and it was about Robert Durst. And he actually just died a few weeks ago. So anyway, Robert Durst. The police didn't actually think that he was involved in Kristen's disappearance, but they still kind of considered him a suspect in the disappearances of other women that went missing in California. So there's a woman named Karen Mitchell who went missing from Eureka, California. So I'm not sure the distance between San Francisco and Eureka, but just like with my Michaela Garrick video, they thought maybe people, the, the man that hurt and took JC Dugard had something to do with Michaela's disappearance because they were all in the same area in, this, in California. So anyway, he was also a suspect in the disappearance of a woman named Lynn, Sch Lynn Schultz, from Middlesburg, Vermont in 1971. Robert and Kathleen, his wife at the time, were owners of a health food store and Lynn had actually visited the store the day that she went missing. In 2000, Kristen's act was signed into law by then President Bill Clinton. Since April of 2001, Kristen Saul has been able to assist law enforcement officers and their families of missing people for those over the age of 17 because the amber alerts are for children and then you have silver alerts for at-risk seniors so there's something also for people over the age of 17. they also authorized one million dollars per year to support organizations including the national center for missing adults unfortunately their federal funding ran out in 2005. they have continued however with their volunteer efforts to help missing people and their families over the age of 17. Kristen's case has been shown on things like America's Most Wanted and Unsolved Mysteries. So her story has been talked about quite a bit. Kristen Medaffery was 18 years old when she disappeared and was last seen wearing a black Spinelli's t-shirt, a long sleeve dark blue plaid flannel shirt with tan pants. She could have also been wearing a pair of fly London sneakers and the laces were tied in the front and the back behind the heel. There is also an imprint on the fly of each of the soles. She was carrying a green Jansport backpack at the time, and it had a black mesh pocket and two library books inside the bag. Kristen Daffrey is five feet, eight inches tall and weighs around 140 pounds. Kristen has dark brown hair and brown eyes and dimples in her cheeks. Kristen is considered endangered missing. If you have any information regarding Kristen Medaffrey's disappearance, please feel free to reach out to your local law enforcement agency. I'm sure they could help you, um, the FBI and also the Oakland Police Department at 510-238-3641. No matter what you think, please keep Kristen and her family in your thoughts. And if you are a praying person in your prayers, at the end of the day, we are all somebody, someone. I would like to know what you think, of course, but please remain respectful in the comments. One thing I will not tolerate is disrespect in the comments when we were dealing with 
missing persons. Like I said, we are all somebody, someone at the end of the day. Thank you for watching.